Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. And this is Ben and Barry on football. Hello out there, this is Ben Dickerson, your co-host. We love to talk everything football, but now that the NBA is all done, Bear, let me just say real quick, our baseball team, the one team you and I both share, the New York Yankees are on fire. They're playing so well that it, it will be the end of the world if they don't win it all. That's how good they look. Are you serious? That's they they look unbeatable, bro. I, I you know, I have to get you and uh and my other uh Yankee uh um friend, Yankee uh fan friend um together, man, because you guys would talk bat baseball on another level for me because I'm just <laughs> start, you know, you know me. It's like, so what's happening? Oh, it's the World Series. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> You well, got a little ways to go, bro. Don't don't worry about <laughs> well, that. That's when I usually start looking at baseball. Right now, I'm like feel like I'm in the drought of the situation. You know what I mean? I mean, it's baseball, so you know you got a 162 game schedule, so anything can happen. But right now, their pitching looks solid, defense is solid, and they got Aaron Judge and and John Carlos Stanton and guys hitting home runs all over the place. It's insane. If if something goes wrong, like in the playoffs, say, it'll be a total disaster. Really? A total disaster. That's how good they look. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, Ben, what we're going to do, uh, because, you know, in terms of baseball, let me just quickly say, I did know a little bit about something going on, but it was only because it was the Phillies and, you know, Philadelphia stations. That's all they want to talk about. Right. Right. But I did think it was rather interesting <clears throat> that they fired the manager. Yes. And then went on a winning tear. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Uh, was he that bad? Was Is the differential that large between the old and the new coach or, you know, what, what, you know, what, I'll tell you, this 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 happens quite often in a lot of major sports. It somewhat could possibly be the manager's fault, and I'm sure there are people who could explain the difference between the two and correlate that with winning and losing. But for the most part, it's just it's like when a player needs a change of scenery. You know what I mean? For some reason, people that are around the team a lot, I'm talking about journalists, are kind of saying, it wasn't fun playing for Girardi anymore. And this guy Thompson makes it a little bit more fun. The clubhouse is a little bit more together. The players are, 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 are just having a better time of it. They feel more comfortable. When the team is comfortable, the team usually plays well. Interesting, interesting. Um, okay, so, so they, they did lose a start to lose they're starting to get back they had such a nice streak that when they lost the game people kind of went oh my god no. like like you really thought they were going <laughs> to win it you really thought they were going to win the next hundred games in a row right come on it's baseball oh my goodness oh my now ben ben you stank at picking the basketball championship thing going on there what do you mean um, Boston's going to win number six, and then they're going to go win number seven. That was their prediction. I picked Boston winning six when the playoffs started. Okay, so you just stuck with it. Yeah. It went south big time. Went south like a champ. If they lost, I picked them to win in six, and they lost in six. That means I stink. I don't no, know. No, stink. I said their pick stunk. Not you. you no, the of, pick didn't stink. I know your averages. The pick was wrong. <laughs> That the pick didn't stink. It was wrong. It was wrong. It, it didn't stink. Right. If if I picked if I picked Memphis to go all the way, that pick stinks. <laughs> they actually um, they're talking about the NBA draft, which is going to happen, I think, tomorrow. Yep. And uh, there's one. They were talking about one guy, and I don't know his name, but when they were talking about who was the best athlete coming out of the draft, they did name this one kid. And they compared them to, I think, Russell Westbrook or something like that. As a, And I'm thinking, 
I, they, from just the little highlights that they showed, I'm thinking John Morant <laughs> is what this kid looked like. But I don't remember his name, and we'll have to get that. But keep your eye out for a guy who's real athletic. And uh, Consensus number one is probably going to be the kid Jabari Smith out of Auburn. I think he's 6'10", 225 or something like that. He's a superior athlete also, scores, plays defense, rebounds, does it all. They've been pushing the kid from Arizona, the, the seven-footer, uh, Chet Holmgren, I think is his name. I might have the first name wrong. His last name is Holmgren. Um, when I look at him, you know, I see Chris Stapps Porzingis, an okay offensive player, doesn't play defense as well as he should for his height, doesn't really block shots, not a great rebounder. Yeah, yeah. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know, um, I'm just catching up. Most of those kids that they were talking about, I'm seeing them for the first time. I saw a lot of tall, really skinny kids, like you said, you know, um, and one guy was really tall. But, you know, one guy they were saying was very agile. You know, he had ability to get back on defense and, you know, and play out on the fringe, you know. So, you know, I'll learn more about the names and stuff. But tomorrow's the draft. Uh, who who's the first who got the first pick? Oh, you know what? I don't even know who's got the first pick in the draft. Me neither. I wasn't paying that much attention, to tell you the truth. Yeah. It's a bad team. We'll let you know that. It's definitely a bad team. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see who the bad team is. All right, look. Let's talk little PlayStation real quick. Little Madden. Again. Baseball season doesn't, you know, it doesn't do it for me. I need something, and I'm looking for some football. And I told you I was going to get back and start playing live games again, you know. Um, had to figure out a few technical things to figure out what, you know. But I finally got that. So last week, I remember I remember telling you I had a, a come-from-behind win. Score was 14-13, right? Right. Would you believe I had another Come from behind, win this week, score 14 13. Wow, okay. <laughs> ben, the, one of the things that I can understand when you start talking about video games, it's like, it's a game. It's not, you know, we, we go back and forth with that. I can understand some of that sometimes because video gamers do things that a, a real football person wouldn't do. Um, and it's like going forward on fourth down. Um, <laughs> it's sometimes a really bad idea. And that, that's what I was trying to show this right here. I don't know if I can do it. It's a really bad idea in real life or in mad or both. Well, again, it's everything is situational. So I should say can be a really bad idea. Okay, so what's the situation? Situation. I'm playing a guy. He's playing with the Cowboys, right? Okay. I give him credit because you can tell a person that's not that that's playing football because they have a run game. You know what I mean? They're running the ball and mm -hmm. they're throwing the ball. You know what I mean? They got a few tricks up their sleeve, so you kind of get used to that kind of stuff. Um, but that's the great thing. The thing about the game is it does the same thing in many cases, right? Um, but a game. Sometimes once you kind of figure out what it's going to do, you can beat it. You know what I mean? Because it's, okay. it's programmed. But these people, they come out of, <laughs> you know, and a lot of them are playing video games. So it's more that about that. So what happened was that was a situation, right? All right. So it's the fourth quarter. Can you see that picture? Yes. All right, good. I'm going to see if I can make it just a little bit bigger. There we go. So first quarter, he scores. Second quarter, I score. Third quarter, he scores, and this is the extra point. Okay? Okay. But he's up 13 to 7. As we're coming down, and as you, if you can see here, um, these are ratings for the plays. Where we're at is in the last few seconds, minutes of the game, late, late in the fourth quarter, 
and I'm down. And he's on his own 27 yard line. And he decides to go for it on fourth and one. On his own 27? Yep. In the fourth quarter? Yep. Late. And he's winning? Yep. That's a bad idea in real life and in the game. <laughs> That's what I said. And I don't even play the game. <laughs> Now, he been, you know, the thing is, he's had a certain amount of success running the ball and things like that, okay? He's got Zeke back there. So he's thinking he can get one yard on you. It shouldn't be that big a deal. But I was able to do pretty – remember I said to you, once I get to know my defense, you yeah. know? Right. Well, I, I switched up defenses on him. <laughs> what did he run? Huh? What type of play did he run? Was it like a straight dive? Was it? Well, he was to get outside. Well, he was trying to throw the ball. Actually, throw. <laughs> so, he, he, let me tell you something. He has scored that, that that third quarter score was a beautiful post pattern. When I had two deep safeties in this, they parted. That tight end hit me dead in the middle and nobody knew. I was like, damn. He beat you deep with Dalton Schultz. And Come straight on, down the, in the middle of the field. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, so then that that happened, but he gave I, I sacked him. The defense sacked him. So now it's me. <laughs> okay, on the 27, I still got a score. And as you can see, uh, two plays later, I'm in for the touchdown. Now, let me see. If <laughs> There's your Vaughn and Cowboy the, defense. He should have ran the same play on you for first down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't know if he, he ain't got my play. All right, so here's the thing. In real life, that situation, there's no way you would go for it. However, in Madden, if in fact he has had success moving the ball on you, I can see him trying that. However, if he's been running the ball on you somewhat successfully, I'm running the ball. I'm not going to put it in my quarterback's hands. Not in Madden. <laughs> well, you know, I'm kind of like you. Because you know what I always say, you got to have a power game, right? Right. Ben. It doesn't mind. necessarily have to be a power play. You need one yard. Well, it depends on what defense you're coming up against. You, you know, know, but you change the defense. Well, I, he doesn't know what defense you're going to play. He has to assume you're going to play something. Yeah, that's true. Thing in you, right. So you sent the pass rush. Did you anticipate a pass play? Um, it's a blitz. So, so you blitz. So, blitz. so run I'm, blitz. Looking to, I'm looking to get the run. And I'm thinking more of a run blitz, but it's a blitz. <laughs> he probably could have ran the ball on you, got that first down. He might have. That would have been the game. That would have been the game. You know? But but then you got to stop me. <laughs> and I finally, you know something? One thing I love about this game. I have approximately five uh, formation and plays that I come out in, in specific plays per formation. If I change personnel on those formations, I get different audibles depending on whether I put in an extra tight end or extra running back. So the same formation actually turns into, let's see, another, gives me a different, another eight to 12 options <laughs> of, of- Because of the personnel. Into. Because uh, of personnel. Because of personnel. And the audibles that I go into, what I've been able to do is find the personnel that gives me the same realm of audibles. So the realm of my realm of audibles includes eye, eye formations, strong eyes, all, all of those power formations, you know, 
as well as a couple extra shotgun formations. So what it means is if I need to run it here, there, there, whatever, whatever, I can do it. You know what I mean? But right. my fun is coming because my lead running back in this play that I have now is use check. <laughs> use check is very, you, you know, um, how Debo is flexible in terms of being able to like run the balls. Use check as a power back and as a small tight end. You can play him in both situations. See, this basically, I think he was a tight end in college, um, as a matter of fact. So he gives you a lot of flexibility. You know, um, a lot of cases, I'd rather have him in there than even another back who might be a little faster or something like that. But if I want to go into, uh, you know, audible into a power run, I want a full back right there. You know what I mean? So right. it's, 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 it's going to be interesting next season to see how they use you know, the, the different players, especially how they use Debo. Um, so, and, and, you know, they got some good running backs. All right. The fun that we're going to talk about this week is going to be based around the theme that we talked about in a previous show called the best job in the NFL. My thesis is that the best job in the NFL is backup quarterback. <laughs> now Ben we're going to look at the backup quarterbacks throughout the league we're going to start with the AFC East and if you think about the AFC East who, who are your starters uh, the Bills Josh Allen right right you got uh Got Mac Jones, Zach Wilson. Mac Jones for the Patriots, Zach Wilson for the Jets, and Tua Tungla Vailoa. How close was I there? Very good. Very uh, good. <laughs> don't ask me to do it again. Um, for, for the Dolphins, right? Right. Now, the goal of your season is always to win a Super Bowl. So my question is, if your starter goes down, where do your Super Bowl chances go? Do they flush? Or do you still have some hope, some life? <laughs> you know, the classic is with the Eagles, you know? Your, your, your all pro, pro bowl quarterback goes down, young gunslinger, and they bring in a relic from the past, Nick Foles. <laughs> he just happens to have what it takes to get it done and gets a Super Bowl. How often does that happen? A couple times. That's about it, you know, out of, out of what are we, what is this, Super Bowl, what, 50? 53? Woo! Yeah, you know what I mean? So a couple times, I mean, it doesn't happen often. So we're going to take a look at it, and we're going to look at it from, you know, who they are. And the reason that it's the best job is because the pay versus the wear and tear balance is so favorable. <laughs> it's just a beautiful thing. You know, and we saw that with the Minnesota Vikings because Kirk Cousins never gets hit. And that quarterback, that backup has been in the league almost 10 years, averaging close to a million dollars per year. And I think he's touched the ball in a game maybe three times that entire time. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> you can only smile. You know what I mean? You're in the league. You, you, okay. So let's let's uh, let's <laughs> let's get ready to talk about the best job in the NFL. And to me, it says something about the the GM and the, and the coaching and stuff. And when they when you look at who they have backing up their starter. So let's take a look at. We're going to talk a little bit about who they are and, and how much money they make and have made over their career because let's face it, man. I mean, a backup quarterback job can be rather sweet and apparently you can get some longevity out of it. A lot of these guys are around for a long, long time. I think that's one of the things that struck me. It's not like they're in the league two and three years and then they're out. They're in the right. league for a while. So let's start out with your favorite AFC team, the Buffalo Bills. Now, the Buffalo Bills have 
one of the more exciting quarterbacks in the NFL in Josh Allen. Josh Allen is, is, has been shown to be a winner. The Bills are considered to be Super Bowl contenders, ready to get up there and play with the likes of the best in the AFC, especially. And should Josh Allen go down, the responsibility falls to one Case Keenum. Case Keenum has had uh, a pretty nice career, came in as an undrafted free agent in 2012 with the Texans. Um, over his career, he's made over $45 million, with the largest cash payout being at about $18 million in 2018, when he came off of a pretty strong year with the Vikings and got picked up by the Broncos. Um, right now, he's backing up uh, the, uh, the on the Bills. He's making about... 3.5 million right now. And that's a big change from what I'm not sure what Josh Allen's making right about now. Um, do you remember what his contract looked like? Josh Allen's up real close to 30 mil. Okay. So there you go. That's it's that's your separation in terms of uh contract between the starter and the backup. So what do you think about Case Keenum? Well, first of all, money-wise, obviously in 2018 he went over to the Denver Broncos, 18 mil back then was real close to good starter money. Uh, that was a few years ago. That number has obviously jumped over the last couple of seasons. Um, but again, that was probably his last opportunity to be on a team where they expected him to be the starting quarterback. Uh, as backups go, I would say the Buffalo Bills are in pretty good shape. Case Keenum has proven that he's capable of putting up numbers learning a system uh, in, in ingraining himself into a system and uh, being able to win games, either as a backup or as a starter. Now, obviously, when he was a starter with Denver, the team wasn't that good, uh, and he didn't put up any astonishing numbers to be able to hold on to that starting spot, thus the beginning of his career as being a backup. However, I would say he's a fairly capable capable backup if something was to happen to Josh Allen and they were on a real nice run and looking like a serious Super Bowl contender, which I expect them to be. I don't know that Case Keenum would be able to finish the job, but they could do a whole lot worse. Case Keenum is a very capable backup quarterback. Well, when we look across the, uh, the AFC East, uh, which is what we're looking at today, uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, Case Keenum, the highest level of playoff that he had was in was what, the NFC Championship, right? Yeah, he went pretty far with who? Uh, New Orleans? With Minnesota. The Minnesota, right. Minnesota, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you've got a backup with that level of playoff experience. It's got to be a good thing. That's got to be a good thing. So right now... He's uh do you think he's doing any mentoring or is he just sitting back le letting oh, the a little bit? I mean, let's face it, the guy's been around. Josh Allen's really just going to what is fourth or fifth season. So obviously, as good as Josh Allen is, there's some things that Case Keenum could probably school him on. I think Case Keenum will be a big help in quarterback meetings as a mentor and just uh helping prep him for games. All right, so there's your case, Keenum, ready to take the uh, the bills and pick it up if Josh Allen is not available. Josh Allen doesn't get hurt too often, so more than likely he'll be holding. Uh, what is it that they hold nowadays? Is it the laptop? <laughs> <laughs> the surface? It's, yeah, it's the surface, yeah. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be holding the surface and getting ready for uh, – Whatever. So Case Keenum will be ready to step in uh, should something happen. Let, let, think about it this way, okay? Last year, the backer was Mitchell Trubisky. Mm. Who, who would you trust more as your backup to Josh Allen? Oh, definitely Case Keenum. There you go. Case Keenum, you know. Um, Mitchell Trubisky, number one, is much younger. Number two, 
he still got uh, enough youth and a mix of youth and experience to compete if he's in the right situation for a starter job. So you don't want to keep him as a backup. You'll let him go and bring in a guy that you know can get the job done for you if you need him. Okay, okay. Case Kano. All right. Who's up next? Let's see. Let's talk about those Miami Dolphins. Um, interesting listening to uh, still this coach talking about uh, how Brian Flores, former head coach for the Dolphins, wound up as an assistant coach. He was like, I really didn't know the guy. He's like, but when it looked, I thought he was going to get a head coaching job. And then when it looked like he wasn't, I'm like, no, nah, I can't let that talent just go, you know. So he scooped them up, man. Part of that brain trust. So that's going to be interesting. Teddy Bridgewater is coming in, if needed, for Tua Tagliavailoa. Now, you don't think that this is going to engender any conflict, that Teddy's pretty much grounded as the backup there? Yeah, I'm afraid so. You don't want to commit to a guy who's had the injury problems that Teddy's had. Yet, he's been around long enough. He's been in enough different situations, and he's proven himself to be very capable, again, of putting up numbers and winning games. So it looks like he's going to be resigned to being a backup. His last opportunity to solidify himself as a starting quarterback was probably last season in Denver. And again, injuries did him in. Well, you know, he has career earnings of $57.5 million. He's averaging about 7.2, close to $7.2 million per year. So um, if he can uh, survive on, you know, in that backup role, uh, he'll continue because I do believe, let me take a quick look here, they're paying him about $6.5 million. So he's only about a million under what he normally averages anyway as a backup. So... Uh, I, I don't know, though, Ben. I, I I just wonder about the leash on Tua, whether, you know, is, if they're really going to give him a full leash. I think that's my ben, only question with him. No, I kind of agree with you. When you look at it that way, I'm not going to commit, in my opinion, that they will give him uh, an infinite leash. I know that they want to give him every opportunity possible to prove that with the weapons they've gotten for him, he can be their quarterback going forward. However, uh, if he was to falter, you do want a backup who's had a lot of starting experience. So Teddy fits the bill, but they're hoping like heck that that doesn't happen because Teddy's proven himself to be an injury problem. And if, in fact, Tua was, two was to fall on his face and Teddy had to go, I mean, Teddy's only as good as that next big hit, you know? And then you got all kinds of problems because who's going to back up Teddy? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <sighs> that is always the question, isn't it? Yes, that is always the question. Who's gonna... I, for one, am ruining, rooting for Tua. I think Tua is going to do well. I really do. I really? think the confidence that they showed in him, the fact that for whatever reason, I don't know what his problems were with Brian Flores, but now that that's off of his shoulders, obviously that was a burden to him. I, I, I think Tua is going to do well. I really do. Okay. Not, not win the division well, but – Beat the Patriots once well. Beat the Patriots once well? Yeah. Wow, that's an interesting definition of well there. I think they get I think they get swept by the Bills. I think they go one and one against the Patriots. And I think they smoke the Jets twice. Smoke the Jets twice. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, let's take a look at the next player that we have uh you mentioned the patriots so he's gonna split with the patriots right mm -hmm. brian hoyer is backing up mac jones brian hoyer uh was an undrafted 
uh, free agent, right? He's got 12 years in the league, averaging about 2.6 million with career earnings at about 34.3 million. And he, again, 12 seasons uh, that he's been around and he started with the Patriots. They're the ones who drafted him or he was an undrafted free agent. So they, they picked him up and they saw something in him and now they've brought him back. And would you put mentor beside his name? Yes, I would. I would put mentor <laughs> beside his name. Number one, he's been around for a long time. Number two, jeez, uh, I'm trying to remember if Matt Castle was still with the Patriots when Brian Hoyer was there because they let him go pretty quick. Of course, like you said, he was just an undrafted free agent. So it wasn't like they were really looking for a lot out of him. Um, he had some opportunities with Arizona and with Cleveland. But um, in fact, I think he was a starter in Cleveland. And I think he was a starter in Houston for a little while too. But those two did not work out. Thus, he turns into a backup. Spend a year with your team before yeah. going back to New England. And, you know, again, he hasn't really shown that he can – really hold on to the quarterback reins for a team, especially a team that's a contender. Uh, so with New England, he's basically there because he's been there. He knows the system. He knows the coaches. He's been around long enough to know kind of the ins and outs of being a professional. He can help Mac Jones, who's a young guy, in that respect. And then they'll have to keep their fingers crossed that Mac Jones stays healthy and they don't have to depend on Brian Hoyer for multiple games. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, from the perspective that we were talking about, where I was saying that the goal is to win a Super Bowl. Right. You pick up a backup in Brian Hoyer. You, you, you've got a rookie. I don't know how what the Super Bowl aspirations for the Patriots are. Do you think that they... Again. That's going to be different for every team. So some teams, when you're looking at the Bills, you say, if we're on a roll and we're Super Bowl contenders and we believe that we will be Super Bowl contenders and our quarterback goes down, can Case Keenum carry us the rest of the way? Can he finish it off if he has to? I would go with him before I would go with Brian Hoyer, obviously. I would go with him before I would go with Mitchell Trubisky, obviously. But when you have a team like the New England Patriots, who honestly can't be thinking Super Bowl. I mean, obviously that's that's the goal. We, we understand that that's the goal for everybody. But realistically, let's face it. They they're looking for a guy. Super Bowl. They're looking for a guy who can maybe keep him in a game if Mac Jones goes down and maybe start a game or two and get a win or two before Mac Jones comes back and keeps going. That's, that's Brian Hoyer. Such low aspirations. Bro, you, you can aspire all you want, okay? <laughs> you can aspire all you want. Everybody aspires to win the Super Bowl. But let's face it, they, 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 you know, I mean, do the Jets think they're going to win the Super Bowl? Is that our next team up? Well, you know, they've got some Niner DNA in their coaching, so you know, Super Bowl is just kind of it there easy. for you, man. Take it easy. Slow down. <laughs> 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 All right, well, let's jump over to the Jets. Starter is Zach Wilson. Now... <sighs> Again, what's this, his third year, I think? Going into his third year. Third year, third year. And he's backed up by a guy who has 14 years, who's won a Super Bowl, who has career earnings of $173 million. 6'6 six, six out of Delaware in the 2008 draft, round one, number one overall, one Joe Flacco, 
Flacco averaged about 12.3 million per year. Right now, to back up this young man, this contract's worth about 3.5 million. It's got to be sweet when you made that much money, and now you can come in as the backup. You know, we talked about mentor with Brian Hoyer. What about with Zach Wilson and Joe Flacco? Nice to have a mentor with the Super Bowl ring. Mm. You, you can't ask for much more than that, okay? Flacco's been there, done that, seen just about everything. He can teach him how to be a pro. Um, he's been in the system a couple of years now, since 2020. So uh, he can help him in the meeting rooms. He can mentor him on the sideline and in the meeting rooms. Um, he's the de facto quarterback coach. I don't even know if they employ an actual quarterback coach, but Flacco would be it. Okay. Uh, I can think of a lot worse guys for Zach Wilson to have to turn to if things ain't going right out there on the field for him when he comes off and sits down on the bench. To have Joe Flacco come over with the surface and sit down and say, young boy, look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. That's pretty good. Okay. That's his role. I'll give him three million a year for that. Sure. Three million. Okay. 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 All right. Now, if he has to play, if he has to play. <laughs> That's my next question. <laughs> if he has to play, first of all, let's remember, they drafted Zach Wilson to be their quarterback from now into whenever. He is their starting quarterback. Joe Flacco is there because if something happens to Zach Wilson, they expect Joe to be able to go in, hand the ball off, and throw enough passes to possibly win a game or two. Okay. okay. Just off knowledge alone. <laughs> and it's not like the guy can't throw anymore. He's just not who he was. But he can engineer a drive. He knows all the plays. He's not going to go numb nuts on you in the middle of a series. So, hey. So he could potentially do a Nick Foles. Potentially. Oh, I don't know if you can go that far because there's, that's not the kind of team they have. Let's face it. The Eagles won the Super Bowl, although I believe they had a lot of luck. They, had a, pretty good, they had a pretty good doggone team. It wasn't like they were bums and he carried them. They had a good team. The Jets are not there yet. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we, we looked at the schedules. We looked at the personnel, the brain trusts. So I understand what you're saying, because you got to get out of your division, no right. doubt about it. And that, that's a part of what's going to go on uh, with that team. So there you go. All right. So, Ben, AFC East, Jets, Dolphins, Patriots and Bills. Who's your favorite backup quarterback so far in this in this division? Case Keenum, without a doubt. Case Keenum. Number one, he's in the best situation. Number two, he fits this situation better than the other, better than the other guys. Um, here's something interesting, okay? Since you started this off saying if you're headed for a Super Bowl and your quarterback goes down, right? That scenario. Of the other backups in the NFC East, if I didn't have Keenum and I only had to choose from them, I would have to go Teddy. I would hate to have to do really? that. Really? I would hate to have to do that. But I would go Teddy over Flacco. Yes, I would. Wow. Wow. You would okay. I think Teddy with the Bills weapons would be better than Flacco with the Bills weapons. That's just me. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's a whole thing because you're talking Bills weapons, so that that's right. Because you talked about Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> when you when I say Super Bowl, you think Bills. <laughs> what well, yes. At this moment, yes. At this moment, there's yes. other teams I think about. I think Niners. I think Bills. I think Bucks. I think Rams. 
Okay, okay. But but that's for another show. That's for another <laughs> show. That's for another show. All right. So your fa- your favorite is Case Keenum coming out yes. of it. Yes. Um, let's just rank them real quick. Case Keenum, then and who Teddy, like then it? Flacco. Teddy and Flacco and Hoyer at the bottom, right? Eh? Yeah. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense to me. Okay. Well, that wraps up the AFC East. Best quarterback, uh, excuse me, best job in the NFL as backup quarterback. The bottom line, though, we'll say the king of earning power in the AFC was definitely Joe Flacco at $173 million. Which makes sense. The guy's got a Super Bowl ring. Guys the guy's put up numbers. The guy's been a, a competent starter for many, many seasons. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right. Okay, Benny, in this section, we're going to take a quick look at the Ben and Barry on Football Facebook page, which I invite everyone to go to because generally that we lead off subject matter with a lot of stuff on the page, except when we're doing something special like we did this week with the best job in the NFL, that backup quarterback job. Remember, you can find Ben and Barry on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and as you can see right here, on YouTube. Um, And don't forget our podcast, which you can find on Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast, Ben and Barry on Football, www.benandbarryonfootball.com. All right, let's take a quick look at the page uh, on for some current events. Bam! We have one to Sean Watson, who settled all but four of his claims. And from what I understand, one of those four that's not settled is the, is the one lady who did the special on TV. So, she was the very first one. She's serious. She ain't joking. She right. ain't joking. And, of course, all the settlement is, you know, quiet you know you're not going to hear it undisclosed let's use that word um but now they are talking the nfl and potential penalties and i've heard bandied around a full season what do you think yeah uh when that talk first kind of came up which seemed a little early for it to come up because we weren't to this point yet um we may have even only had 18 to 20 uh, actual different uh, people complaining against him at that point. I think we started around six games. Then they started talking about eight games. Then some more women started coming into the equation. Uh, Then the settlements became clear just the other day. Now the word is we're talking about a whole season. Now, I don't know that that's what Goodell is thinking. I don't know that that's what the NFL attorneys are thinking. Obviously, it's it's a possibility. I personally don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to do something unprecedented, but I don't think it's going to be a year. I think they're going to do something like 10 games. That's just me just thinking out loud. Number one, we look at the money that the Browns are going to pay this guy. $230 million, all guaranteed. If they suspend him for an entire year, not only does that make the Browns look like complete idiots, but it really, really hurts them, especially with the Baker Mayfield situation and everything else. Can I say this? Yeah. Could you use the word guarantee? And I'm doing some research and I'm reading, and I'm finding out that a lot of the guarantees that the uh, NFL or the team media throws out there, you know, 
such and such guarantee have more to do with injury guarantees than actual guarantees that would say if they don't want to cut them, they can't. There's no way they would ever even think about cutting him. There's no way. I'm just saying whether or not it'd be allowed in the contract. That's all that I'm saying. Okay. And if if that is the case, then the Browns wouldn't look as somewhat gullible as they seem to look, you know. I saw one meme and it said, you know, like um, Browns asked, asked Teddy, did you do it? Teddy said, no. They said, okay, here's $230 million. Right. <laughs> you know, it sounded kind of like how it actually happened. But okay, so that that's uh, Deshaun Watson settled all but four civil sexual misconduct suits. The thing that's funny is Molly Caram, um, when you see her face, when she talks about Deshaun, I think she would be really not happy if he happens to get away. All right, we're running out of time, Ben. Rest in peace, Tony Saragusa, the goose. He was a fun sideline guy, man. Yeah, he was. Oh, my goodness. I miss him already. Yeah, I miss him being mic'd up. He I'm, had a lot of funny stuff going on. I'm and you. when they did the, um, um, what do you call it? Um, hard Knocks. Okay. With the Ravens. He was he was hilarious, man. <laughs> didn't he put didn't he put uh something in in uh he he stole Shannon Sharp's car and filled the car with something. Well, I remember one of those pranks. It, yeah, he pulled a nice prank on him, man. Yeah, great. I don't know if it was like golf balls or something. Yeah, he, he looked like he was a fun guy, great teammate. I know he will be missed. Um, and, and he was really, relatively young, what, 55? Yeah, and was a really good player. Oh, yeah, he was. He was. That's, that was a lot of man to move if you yes, <laughs> yes, was be moved by. But apparently, the Rams are uh, uh, the Ravens rather are having a real rough time of it. Lost the young linebacker Jalen Ferguson, only 26 years old. Yeah, this is a real hurt piece here, too. Uh, did they figure out what's wrong? Or I know that the family was saying uh, they were hoping for a little privacy on this one. I don't know if they let out what actually happened to him. Yeah, I, I don't remember that either. Um, so, you know, again, rest in peace. Before we finish up, I want to I want you to, to mention about the upcoming Philly Bowl. Yes. Okay. Philly and Bowl. I want to show you something real quick. Okay. So I got a wish for Father's Day. <laughs> but wait, I got a white nice. one too. And look at the name on the back. Nice. Number 25. That's my running back, baby. Oh, you got home and away? Yes. Oh, my God. Wait, wait. And the boomer got Niner stuff shirts to go along. That's nice, man. That's nice. So, oh yeah, absolutely. I, I see. Uh, I gotta up. I gotta up my Giants game now. <laughs> I gotta up my Giants game. But uh, yeah, Elijah Mitchell. Uh, he'll be a late fantasy guy to look at. Uh, I know that if I had selected him when I was supposed to. In last year's playoff draft, I probably would have won the championship. Really? I only needed one good game out of him. <sighs> and I and I I I don't even want to talk about it, man. <laughs> I was in Florida for nationals, for flag nationals, and the draft. I was on a Zoom call for the draft, and I had notes written, and I said, I'm gonna take Elijah Mitchell next. And then after that, I'm going to come back and take Sid Wilson from the Cowboys, the receiver. And somebody distracted me. There was a lot of noise going on in the house. And it was my turn to pick. And I said, Sid Wilson, I didn't mean to. And I, I lost by a few points. 
And if I had taken Elijah Mitchell, I would have won that game. And that would have put me into the chip. Mm. I like Elijah Mitchell, good player. Okay, okay. okay. So anyway, that, does that segue me into Philly Bowl? Yes, sir. Okay, so Philly Bowl, which is basically the biggest flag football tournament in the Philadelphia area is coming up in August. I forget the exact dates. For some reason, I think it's August the, I don't have a calendar, the 13th to the 15th or something along those lines, or the 14th and the 15th or something like that. It's a Saturday and a Sunday in August. Um, my team will be entered in the Philly Bowl. We're going as the Philly Knowles. Um, we'll be playing in the uh, Division Three group. There's two groups. Division One and Division Two are com are um, combined, and then Division Three, which is where my guys have been playing anyway, with another team. So I'm just going to pick up where we left off and take them there. Our goal is to win Philly Bowl. Um, get in a tournament or two come this fall whenever the, the league allows us to be off four games so that we can travel and then ultimately go there you go august 13th to the 14th that's saturday and sunday um and then ultimately go to the flag football national championships in january down in orlando, in orlando florida so yes this is a huge tournament on the East Coast, there will be a lot of teams here. If you want to see some really, really good flag football, this is where you want to be. The location is in Conchahokan at a, a complex called the Proving Grounds, uh, Conchahokan Road, Conchahokan, Pennsylvania. Um, mark that down if you want to see some good flag football. Come on out. A lot of eight man. There's going to be seven man, nine contact, five man contact, and nine contact. And also, the women will be playing. Bro, if you want to see some football, I'm telling you, <laughs> come on out here to this tournament. You're going to see some real good football. And if you haven't seen women's flag football and you're curious about it, come watch these women play. I'm serious, bro. If Lady Lee is here, and the Black Mambas, bro, <laughs> you, after you watch them, you might not want to watch the men anymore. Wow, that's crazy. I'm telling you, these girls get it in. They wow. get it in. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, Ben, we're counting down now, which means you get the last word. All I need to say is go nose. 